What's up guys, welcome back to the video. Today I'm gonna to be talking about the three worst things that I purchased in my 20s. Now I'm almost 30 years old in just a few months and I feel like I've made generally mostly all good decisions when I'm purchasing things and I would not say that I'm in any kind of debt right now really other than to my car. So I feel like I've made pretty good decisions and uh, so far so good. But these are some of the top three things that stick in my mind when I think of the worst things that I purchased. Number one, first thing that pops into my mind was my 2013 Ford Focus ST. Now the reason I purchased it at the time was because I had a pretty good salary job working for Razor, which was one of my main jobs I worked for in my 20s. I worked there for three years, had a pretty good salary of around $40,000 a year plus uh, plus commission and all that stuff on top of what I was making. So naturally I saved up quite a bit of money after about a year or so working there. I wanted to buy a house. Unfortunately, my whole life up until that point, I had never had credit. I never really had a credit card. I had a credit card that had like a thousand dollar maximum, but I'd never used it. I didn't even know where it was at the time. I had never been in any kind of debt before. I've always paid everything in like cash essentially and unfortunately I just did not know anything about credit so I had about sixteen thousand dollars saved up I went to go buy a house did all the research and all that stuff uh, and then they told me I could not get approved they said I needed to build up my credit so what did I do I went and I purchased a very expensive car now granted it wasn't a new car so it already lost a chunk of its value. It had 10,000 miles on it. And I got it for about, it was 22,000. And after all sales tax and all that stuff, it ended up being about $28,500. The car lasted me six years solid. I drove it around the country, put 225,000 miles on it. Generally, it was a very, very good car. I can't really say anything bad about it. Although I kind of wish that I would have bought in a cheaper car because that car did run up my insurance quite a bit. It costed me probably around like $700 a month or so. And just, I didn't really need it. I would just go back and say like, to anyone who's looking out to buy a car, buy a car that's like five years old. It's worth like less than half of what the MSRP was for that car. And generally when you buy those kind of cars, you can drive them around for a few years and then you can sell them later for just about the same price that you bought them for. Now I purchased that car, $28,000, and I ended up selling it for about $3,000. So I ended up paying around like five grand a year to drive that car. Could have definitely gotten away with something better. Again, it's not really that bad of a decision, plus I absolutely love the car, but I think I could have just bought in a cheaper car few years older and uh, saved quite a bit of money uh, it was like a kind of a race car so I did kind of get a few tickets not anything too bad though second thing that well I'm gonna group these together because I just recently purchased another car after I paid off the other one uh, had a chunk of money sitting around and I needed something to tow my stage so I bought my Ford Explorer Sport uh, this was about a $35,000 purchase a little higher I uh, had a little bit less money saved up, but I needed something to tow. I had all of these shows lined up. For those of you who don't know me, I have a stunt show, tramp wall and extreme sports kind of deal. I needed something to tow. I probably should have stuck with my Ford Focus and just kept it as a daily driver, which I did for a while, but I should have just uh, bought in like a cheap car that could tow because I don't need to tow that often, and instead of spending a lot of money on a car that was expensive that can tow I was thinking oh I'm gonna be driving this all around the country and then this thing called corona virus hit and uh, all shows canceled now I have a really expensive car that generally isn't that bad of a investment because it is really nice it is very safe it is a very good car but I probably should have bought like a five thousand dollar truck to tow everything around and it would have saved a lot of money now I'm paying down that car but I probably should have just saved my money and got like a cheaper car to tow or a cheaper truck to tow around everything but I'm still kinda happy with my purchase 
but I kind of wish I would have gone back and not made that purchase. Second thing that I bought was a massage chair. Now, when you're like a professional athlete like I've been for the last 10 years, money comes and goes. In the summertime, it's really good for us because we do performances and lots of shows and like the money is coming in good. In the winter time, it's not coming very good. And uh, so we were doing this show at San Antonio Rodeo and there was a massage chair booth by uh, Infinity Massage Chairs. They offered me one of the chairs that they had on demo for I think it was about 60% off or maybe even 70% off. $12,000 massage chair. I ended up buying it for $4,000. I was like, I'm gonna use this thing every single day. What happened? Well, one, it got devalued very quickly because my cat likes to scratch leather things. Second, I have not used it that often. Although it is the greatest massage chair I've ever sat in, I kind of probably would have, I wish I could go back and tell myself, hey, you probably shouldn't buy this. Because the way I was thinking of it was like, oh, this is like a third of the money that I just made. I think it was even less than the third of the money that I just made during that show. So I was like, oh, this is no big deal. When you start making lots of money at certain times and you have a lot in your bank account, you start thinking in fractions rather than thinking realistically of how much it's going to cost you and stuff. So kind of a bit of a dumb decision. I was thinking invest in my body. I had back pain at the time. Again, still, I did kind of need it to perform more and it does like make my body feel good. But now it mostly sits in the massage or in the in the living room and people just kind of use it whenever it's like, oh, cool, look at this massage chair I got. Yeah, kind of a dumb decision. Probably shouldn't have made that one. Uh, my third one, which I don't think was a super bad decision, but I wish I could have gone back and told myself, don't jump on this. Um, at the time, I wanted to start a clothing line. I had not started a technically a legal business. At the time, I had a social media business going for me, but technically that was still like under my own name. It was a sole proprietorship. Like I was basically running a business, but I wanted to start a clothing line and I thought, oh, I have to get all this legal stuff taken care of. So I went and I bought a really expensive website. I think it was like four or 500 bucks for a year. I spent like $1,500 on clothes to like obviously sell I put my label on them and stuff. Then I spent all this money starting like an LLC and like getting all like my resale certificate and all that good stuff. Ended up just costing me around like $2,500 or so, maybe even a little bit more. And what happened was I never even really got into that business. In turn, I didn't even realize this, but I'm not really into clothes. Like if you look at me, I'm wearing, I wear a ripped shirt like every single day with my logo on it. Later, I did end up starting a clothing line which kind of went with my footwear business. I do have a footwear business, which I don't regret at all. And now we kind of have a clothing line. But at the time I jumped in, the business was called Effable. Uh, it was funny. Uh, and we just, uh, we just never got into it, didn't really sell a single thing, didn't really put our like minds into it, didn't try too much, and in turn I would just go back and tell myself, buy some clothes and see if you want to do a clothing line, rather than just jump all in. You know, if anyone's ever looking to start a business or something, I highly recommend just like just dabbling in it a little bit to see if you want to. Because in my entrepreneurship career that I've had over the last five or six years, I've started and closed many different businesses. You generally like dabble in a little bit of things and then kind of like overall, they all kind of combine together later, which is what I have now is a footwear company that produces acrobatic shoes, which also goes along with my stunt show, which also goes along with like a clothing line that I started which also goes along with the social media business because that's how I run my company social media. So basically all of the little businesses that I started over the past like five years or so kind of combined into one. But just anyone out there who's looking to start a business, don't just spend all your money, dive in, tamper with it a little bit. If you enjoy doing it, then jump, jump in then. There's no reason to just dive all in pay for all the legal stuff because it is a pain in the butt to close that stuff later 
and yeah just taxes and everything eventually isn't exactly worth it so that's just some of the mistakes that I've made in my 20s uh, again not really super disappointed with all of them they're all like learning lessons but hope this video helps some of you guys out who uh, know me and uh, maybe are in the same kind of career path as an athlete, performer, or entrepreneur. Again, let's uh, subscribe if you guys haven't, because I really like seeing that number go up. And give this or give this video a nice thumbs up. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.